All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is Friday, the 22nd of January. In the top news, protesting farmer unions on Thursday rejected the government's proposal to suspend the three contentious farm laws for 18 months and to set up a joint committee to find an amicable solution to end the deadlock. The decision was announced by the Samyukt Kisan Morcha, an umbrella body of protesting unions leading protests at several Delhi border points. Moving on, a fire broke out at an under-construction building at the Serum Institute of India's Manjari facility in Pune. Five people died and nine were evacuated from the building, which is one kilometer from the Covishield manufacturing unit. The company's chief executive officer, Adar Punawala, said that the production of the vaccine would not be affected. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic may have stalled the Indian economy last year, but its impact on institutional investments in the real estate sector was apparently minimal. That's according to a report released by the real estate consultancy JLL yesterday, which said that funding by institutional investors in the segment stood at $5 billion in 2020, a 7.4% drop from a year ago. The number of such transactions also showed only a marginal decline at 93% of what was recorded in 2019. In international news, Bitcoin closed in on the lowest level in three weeks as the cryptocurrency's amazing rally gave way to pessimism that prices are too high. Bitcoin tumbled as much as 11.3% yesterday, sliding below the $31,000 mark. It has trended lower ever since breaking through $40,000 and losses have accelerated in the past two days. In more news, China has failed to meet its 2020 trade deal targets with the US. By the end of December, Beijing had purchased about 58.1% of the $172 billion worth of goods it pledged to buy last year under the Phase 1 agreement with Washington. This came as no surprise, though, since the monthly data had shown China was well behind on purchase commitments all year. In fact, the U.S. trade deficit with China grew to $317 billion last year. In international markets, S&P 500 futures were steady after the index eked out another record last night as tech shares advanced. President Joe Biden's push for nearly $2 trillion in additional spending and an intensified federal response to the pandemic have boosted risk appetite. Equity markets in the Asia-Pacific region, though, were trading lower at the start. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade surf for the day in India. Morning, Hormuz. How are we looking at the end of the week? Good morning to you, Alex, and to those who have tuned in as well. 50,000 finally happened. And not only 50,000, but 50,100 happened as well. But then it was the weekly options expiry that took over the initial euphoria of the Sensex scaling the landmark level. Not only did the index fail to hold 50,000, but also fell nearly 400 points below it to end a two-day winning streak. Early ticks on the SGX Nifty today are indicating that the index is trading 60 points lower, below the mark of 14,600. Specific stocks then, and I'll start off with Vedanta, where production of iron ore in Karnataka has risen 21% from last year to 1.4 million tons, while total saleable production of steel rose 7% from last year to 3.4 lakh tons. Mine metal production rose 4% on account of higher iron ore production, while aluminium production from the Lanjigar refinery fell 14% to just over 4 lakh tons. Bajaj Auto in its earnings call said that it is looking to resume bookings for its electric scooter Chetak over the next 2-3 to three months. The bookings had to be shut in March owing to the pandemic and has not reopened since owing to supply-side constraints. Executive Director Rakesh Sharma said that while container shortage continues to remain a challenge, the company is witnessing demand improvement overseas not only in two but also in three wheelers. Optimistic commentary also coming in from the management of Asian Paints which expects the demand conditions to remain strong in the fourth quarter of FY21 as well. On the question of price hikes, the management said that it will wait and see whether raw material prices sustain at current levels before taking a call. 
Some other earnings that were reported after market hours on Thursday, SBI Card saw its asset quality improve in the December quarter, even as net profit declined over 50% from last year. Gross NPA stood at 1.6% from 4.3% last quarter. It also said that pro forma gross and net NPA would have been 4.5% and 1.58% respectively. New account volumes rose 8% to just over 9 lakh. Biocon says that it continues to face headwinds across operational, regulatory and commercial functions post its third quarter results. It said that it expects normalization by the next fiscal. The company's earnings for the October to December period missed street estimates as higher expenses led to profits declining over 20% year on year. After SEAT's strong results, JK Tire has continued the trend by surpassing Bloomberg consensus estimates for the December quarter. Net profit doubled from last year, while revenues rose over 20%. The company attributed the performance to increased demand for passenger and commercial vehicles as well as farm tires. It has forecasted sustained sales and profitability going forward. Science third quarter results were marginally ahead of estimates, although they were mostly flat as compared to the previous quarter. However, the EBIT margin for the DLM business was at a record high. The company has maintained its FY21 guidance of a double-digit decline in its revenue. Emphasis said that the total contract value for the quarter stood at $247 million, 71% of which was in new generation services. The company has said that it remains optimistic of its prospects going forward after its performance in a seasonally weak quarter. Profit for the quarter rose 9%, while margins expanded 30 basis points. IPO updates then. The IPO of Indigo Paints was subscribed seven times on the second day of bidding. The portion for institutional investors was subscribed 3.8 times, while that for non-institutional investors was subscribed just over five times. The portion for retail investors was subscribed nine and a half times. As of closing on Thursday, the Sensex was up over 1% for the week, setting itself up for its 12th straight weekly advance. Whether that holds or not, we shall find out at 3.30pm. But with that, I wish you a happier weekend ahead and it's back to you, Alex. Thanks, Armas. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladitya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.